This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us tonight at the momentous investor evening is Ajahn Reginald, the CEO of Rockfor Therapeutics. Hi there. Thank you very much for joining us. I know we have spoken before on yep. the platform, but it's nice to meet you in person. Yes. First of all, what is it like to be back at an event? What you know? How does it yeah, feel? Well, like you say, it's good to be back out in person, isn't it? It's, yeah. uh, it's good. You know, Zoom is efficient. Um, but then that life is not just about being efficient, right? Exactly. It's also being about meeting people and, and getting a sense of what people do and exactly. what they're passionate about. And do you find here, have you spoken to shareholders already? Or, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you find that people have a lot of interest in what you're doing? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, since we, since we completed the acquisition on September the 16th, we've been in London you know, every week, three or four times a week, and we're meeting lots of investors, lots of enthusiastic investors. So Excellent. Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, you are an innovative cancer treatment company. You have four fully funded programs. Yep. Can you just briefly take us through the four of them? Sure, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we've got four programs, they're all in the early stage of development because we think that's where there's the biggest um, opportunity for us to innovate, um, but also therefore, because we, that's the best opportunity to innovate, that's also the biggest opportunity for shareholders. Mm -hmm. That's where you can get the, the biggest uplift in um, in value because we're, we're doing things that meaningfully change the, the nature of the, the risk involved with our programs. So our idea is to take, or our, or our investment thesis is we take very early innovation, which is frankly often just a good idea, and we make it into something which could be a medicine. Uh, and we understand how to do that in a way that's very appealing and very understandable to both the capital markets, but also to big pharma. Um, because the, the biotech ecosystem is made up of very small companies like ours who are specialists in particular types of innovation and then big pharma companies who typically acquire or license small companies like ours to then develop that innovation. Okay, and would that be the strategy you want to follow then, almost to get big pharma to, to buy you out or to buy one or two of the programs out? Yeah, you know, I think, as I say, our particular expertise is we, we believe, and, and I think our data would support it, is that we can develop these early medicines mm -hmm. quicker, faster, and more effectively than big pharma. Okay. But there's a point you get to where you're looking for a great partner. You're looking for someone who can take this into the clinic um, and ultimately get it to patients more quickly than we can. I think that's what's great about this industry. We're all aligned in trying to help these patients, in particular the patients we're looking at, which are the patients that have the hardest to treat cancers. Hardest to treat cancers, okay. So the four programs, what are they? Are they targeting different um, types of cancer? Um, yes, yeah, so the four programs look at both novel targets. So novel targets means novel ways to kill cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the mid-kind programs, mm -hmm. we've got STAT6, mm -hmm. and then we've got the ability to enhance the, the body's own immune system through natural killer cells. Um, so those are all innovative way, new ways mm. um, that we can kill cancer. Okay. And what stage are they all at then? I guess they're all different stages in development. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, at a macro level, they're all in preclinical, which means they haven't yep. got into human trials yet. But they're within that, yes, they're in they're in different stages of preclinical development. Okay. And is there a particular focus on one at the moment, or are you dedicating equal resource across all four? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, the idea of developing multiple programs is that that ensures at least one or two of the programs get to a value inflection point. You know, ultimately, biotech and pharma offers great rewards, mm -hmm. but like any rational market, that's because there's a degree of risk involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we've got four programs at the moment. All those four programs are showing good data, okay. um, and it's a great portfolio. I mean, it's a brilliant job. It's a great portfolio to have. To have that many early programs in a small company is is very exciting. Excellent. Okay. Now, I believe you are actually presenting at the European Society of Gene Cell Therapy, one of your your programs there. There's a study that's been done on your program that you're going to actually present, is that right? Yeah, it's been presented today. So uh, one, of our, one of our leading scientists is uh, presented that today. So that's results from a very innovative RNA program where for the first time we're able to show um, a novel way of blocking midkine. So midkine is uh, a factor that's released by cancers. Mm -hmm. Cancers that express midkine are very difficult to treat. So if you block midkine, you kill the cancer. Okay. And for the first time we've been able to, or, or the scientists have been able to show for the first time, that they can block cancer by using an RNA okay. um, medicine, and you know, after COVID, we all we all begin to understand what RNA is. Yeah. Um, so it's an exceptionally 
innovative way to block mid thigh and as a consequence to block these very difficult to treat cancers. Okay. So this particular program is showing pretty early promise. Yes. Would you say? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. What about the other programs and any early signs you're seeing on sort of their success? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, with the recent acquisition, we published the results. All of the programs are showing good efficacy. So that means they've got good cancer killing ability okay. um, in validated models, okay. um, which is really the key the key question at this early point. Okay. You know, fundamentally, what you're trying to understand is does the medicine kill cancer cells? Mm -hmm. And if it does, does that do it? Does it do it better than the other medicines that are out there? Mm -hmm. um, so we picked the medicine. We picked targets that are difficult to treat. And we've got four programs that appear at this early stage to be very good at killing cancers in these difficult to treat targets. Okay. Well, we said at the start that you are they're fully funded these programs yes. up to the up to the preclinical yes, stage. Is that yes. right? And then we're going to stage. clinical trials, phase one, phase two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, with partners. Yes. Yeah, with partners, and that's the goal. So that's the goal, then, is to find partners. So the, the, just finish on the uh, the investment proposition then yes. for shareholders. Where are the in value inflection points going sure. to come from? And then if you, if you can give in any idea, I know it's very difficult on timelines, but uh, to give maybe some milestones that you're looking for sure. in the next few months. Yeah, absolutely. So the investment thesis is, as I mentioned, we take very early innovation and we change that early innovation into a medicine that's recognizable and therefore has significant value. We focus on patients that have the highest need and therefore in the markets that have the, the highest potential. Um, you know, the oncology market is the fastest growing market in pharma and within oncology the areas we're looking at cell and gene therapy and innovative targets is the fastest growing area. Um, so we have data coming out every month. I mean, we have a lot of data. There. We have milestones which are increasing the value of our programs and, and probably just as important, increasing the interest in our programs from potential partners. Um, we have experience of partnering in China, in Japan, in Europe, in Asia. So I think we have all the tools to do innovative deals um, and therefore to build a portfolio of, of great partners which will validate our technology, but ultimately then drive value for the company. Okay, excellent. Well, Ajahn Reginald, thank you very much, the CEO of Rock4 Therapeutics. Fantastic, thank you for your time. Brilliant. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.